On this episode, E.T. stops by. Tell him. With Gary V. <laughs> This is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 223 of the Ask Gary V Show. Don't, don't laugh about me screwing up episode, D-Rock, I saw that. Eric, I'm really glad we did this, man. Likewise. For a long time, for a long time, people kept like, I would get these random emails back in the day saying like, hey, you're like the small white version of Eric. I'm like, who the fuck is that? Eric? I was like, I was just, it was always really funny to me and then obviously in the last couple months we connected on digital and Absolutely. I'm glad we made this happen. Yeah, I'm glad to be, I, I've always wanted to see the Gary V like, live. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wanted to all, the guys would know I would do that. Like, I would do it on my own. Like, <laughs> like one of these days I'm gonna see it live. So I got that off my bucket list. I appreciate man. it. Now why don't you tell the few people that don't know who you are, a little bit about yourself, where you come from, how you roll. Uh, Eric Thomas, man, high school dropout. Uh, mom got pregnant with me at 17, didn't really start talking to my father until I was 30. Um, I mean, the whole nine. Homeless, sleeping in abandoned buildings. And my guy, CJ, man, we built this company from, I don't know if we had 50 cent, no cents, I don't know. Negative yeah, cents? Negative cents. Owed a couple people yeah. from around right, the way, right, right. Literally <laughs> built this motivational brand you know, from the bottom up. And so now, of course, we work with corporate people like, you know, Cavaliers with Dan Gilbert, sat down with Warren Buffett, you know, working the NBA, NFL, um, you know, traveling the world, doing this thing, so. How did it yeah. start? CJ, get CJ, give, give CJ a little yeah, camera yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. nobody will give CJ Yeah, let's give CJ some camera time. Yeah, it's, it's true, it's true. Listen, yeah. I know how much everybody around me matters Absolutely. and I think a lot of people don't. Yeah. You yeah. and I are lucky yeah. because we were gifted with DNA that allows us to communicate, motivate, yeah. just, you yeah. know, we're a vessel, yeah. Yeah. but there's a lot of people that make things make go. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so 11 years ago, I sat in the room and heard this guy speak Yeah. and I watched like 17, 18, 19 year old kids like. Stand up. Like, like silent, they couldn't yeah. even move, and you could tell how it was impacting them. I said, I don't know what this is. I don't know how we build this into a company. I don't know how we spread this across the globe, but I'm down to die trying with you. I, I believed in the message that much, and from that day forward, we were just like, all right, let's figure it out. Let's get it. And so, how did you get to that? So it was him speaking. Absolutely. So how did you? How did you get there? What was that about? Yeah, I got uh, college. You know, um, it was so funny. Like we would go to these major cities. And these guys that I was with, like they were like, you know, theology majors and they would like speak at these different places and I wasn't good enough. So I would speak at like the fleet markets, you know what I'm saying, I would speak. How did you even begin to think about speak? First of all, you said you didn't even start talking to your dad here at 30, you yeah. look 30 now. Yeah, how, yeah. how old are you? I'm 45. Yeah, looks great. Yeah. Um, so, so when did what? Why did you start speaking at a flea market or the corner? Like, why did that even happen? I, I think for me, because you know, somebody had spoken to me when I was about seventeen years old, and they literally saw this. Like when I was seventeen, sleeping in abandoned buildings, not taking showers, eating out of trash cans. They were like, "Yo, you got something." And I was like, "Well, what? What is that?" You know what I'm saying? They were was like, that the first time you that like? Was the first time, yeah. like, yo, it's an older man who was like, "Yo, you can do it." So he helped me to get my GED, sent me out to college. And who was this man? His name was uh, P.C. Willis. He was a, a, a pastor at a local church that I kind of went to every now and then with one of my homeboys. And it was just unbelievable. He helped me get my GED, sent me 780 miles away from Detroit. And I just got in a new environment in college. And once I got there, I was just like, I was so grateful that I had to pay it forward. So I was like, yo, what this guy did for me, I've got to do unto others. And that's what I've been doing, just speaking life into people who just don't believe that they can do it. You know, so many people think that, like, you have to have a mother or a father in your life. Like, you have to go to a certain school. You have to, and I don't believe that. I believe when you wake up and you're ready to, like, live, at that point, I can help you to get from where you are to where you want to be. And that's why I say, you know, some people think, you know, when you look at uh, certain successful people, maybe their fathers pass something down or their mothers pass it down. It's like, no, it doesn't make a difference if they pass it down or not. Everybody's got to wake up and grind. And if you're willing to work like they're willing to work, you can have whatever you want. Agreed. So like one thing that is interesting to me sitting here, something literally popped in my mind, which is, I don't know if you've ever heard this, your crew's ever heard this. 
I, I so associate myself as a businessman, mm-hmm. right? Like I build businesses and I happen to be motivational. Yeah. I was sitting here and I was like, you know, it, I always say your truth is what has to be done. I think a lot of people want to be motivational yeah. speakers, yeah, life absolutely. coaches, yeah. there's money in it. Yeah. It seems yeah. like, well, I don't know, I'm just gonna tell you and like, wow, right? Yeah. And I'm sitting here and like, hmm, you know, here's a guy who does the motivational thing I don't really love associating that much with motivational yeah, thing. Yeah. I don't know why I feel good about it. And then you're telling, I don't know your story at all. I don't know anything. Yeah. I'm like very weird. Yeah. I just go with whatever I feel. And Absolutely. then, and I'm sitting here like, huh, truth again. He was motivated by a man. That became his gateway. Yeah. And, and he's scratching his own itch. Yeah. He's reverse engineering. Absolutely. And for me, here's the deal. A lot of people say ET is a motivational speaker. Really, I'm not, Gary. I what are you? As, I started as an educator. Yeah. So I got a degree in education. I started with a GED program. Yeah. I was just great at the GED program. Right. Like, and I think that's where people go wrong. People think that it is a profession that makes you great. It's not. I believe you have to be great and you take whatever you're doing and you make that thing. Do great. you get mad when, do you, how do you process when somebody says you're in motivational speaker? I, I get pissed because it's like, yo, like, don't minimize me. Like, I totally don't, don't make me into that. Like, I taught a GED program. Like, you build businesses, I build people. Yep. I just happen to be able to talk about what I do. A lot of people can't talk about what they do. I just talk about what I do, but I build people. If you put me in a room with somebody that's about to get a divorce, I guarantee they won't get one. You put me in a room with somebody or, about or, to or, or, or they might, right? Because I assume, because this is what I do when I motivate or try to mold, I'm trying to reverse engineer the truth. Some people should get a divorce. Oh yeah, I, I feel you. Now, they, <laughs> you know what I mean though? Been, yeah. but I'm just hoping Sometimes they, people walk in and yeah. like, I don't want a divorce, I, I sit and listen. Right? But, yeah. Or, 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 yeah. but listen, yeah. or, I assume you do this, maybe I'm wrong, but no, I'm not, because you wouldn't be here if you were. You listen. Yeah. People walk in, they're like, I don't want this to happen. I listen for 20 minutes, I'm like, no, no, you do want that Absolutely. to happen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, huh, it's very interesting. All right, oh, Andy, what are you doing here? This is not India, this is not the professor. Okay. What, what did, well, were you, were you, him. no, no, I, I, know, I, I, this is, this is, I'm just, he's never asking the questions. Are you just excited? Like, what, excited. why are you here? India had some projects she had to work on. Oh, India got oh, fancy. Yeah. Got fancy. All right. What's the first question? Because I'm used to her when I yeah. watch it. I'm used yeah. to her, yeah. That's like, he's not as pretty as she is. <laughs> no, he's really not. All right, a video cast. Was your, pa- that, your password was crazy. Yeah, so what is that? You go like. I just go back and forth. Respect. All right, let's see. Byron. Hey, Gary. Hey, ET. It's Byron Lazine. I appreciate you guys taking the question. I'm about to go into the gym here. It's 5:45. Trying to get my hustle on. 5:45. I sent a question into Gary last week, and I hope whoever's editing this will throw in my my YouTube channel here, trying to obviously get a little bit of exposure. But uh, you guys have been such a big inspiration to me, ET. I found you a number of years ago. The talk you did to that classroom inspired the crap out of me. I've watched it over a hundred times. Gary, the first time I saw you was a keynote to Remax. You ripped their faces off. And I'm going to be giving a keynote, actually, uh, or or rather an 18-minute talk, at the Tom Ferry Summit next week. This is the Super Bowl of all real estate conferences. I've done two, three, four hundred person talks, but this is in front of 5,000 people. What advice do you have for me stepping up into the big leagues? And guys, I'd also like to know, when your speaking career really launched, were you out pushing that? Or did you let all those paid speaking opportunities come to you? How do you grow a paid speaking business? Thanks, guys. Be well. Eric, what what would you, let's answer it. Go ahead, you go first. Yeah, so first of all, I want to say this, you know, because you talked about that first speech. Again, Gary, I wasn't doing that for the world. It's an accident that that video came out. Like, I had no idea that that Somebody was recording it and put it on YouTube? Actually, a guy recorded it for his thesis. Yep. He never used it for his thesis. Okay. So I don't. The only reason he mic'd me up is because he. When was this? Class. This was ten years ago. Actually, the anniversary to the Guru story is this school year. So that's when I did it. Right? And that was your breakout. That was the breakout. Well, and when we say breakout, we mean to the world. I have two careers. The first one was I've been doing this. A hundred percent. Yeah, like, I, I've been doing this for ten people, years. People, 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 like, oh, you, you broke out. I was like, yeah, yeah I, I worked yeah. every day of my life. Right, right, I right, finally right, broke right, out. Right, right. So if you like, call breaking out after eighteen years. If you, if you call breaking out, yeah, if you call that's breaking, that's breaking out like punting yeah, anything yeah, yeah, that was yeah, happy yeah, and yeah, fun yeah. and easy yeah, and just grinding my face off, yeah, I broke out. Yeah. So, so, so for me, that that speech was to about forty or fifty kids from the inner city who were about to get kicked out of Michigan State, and I was going off. I was just going off because it's like they don't have three chances. Like their parents, you know, just got laid off of four Jim and Christ. We're talking about 
when the, when the country hit the recession, these kids' parents have lost their job, GM, Ford, Chrysler, all crashes. This is their chance to get a degree. And they're bullshitting. So I'm going off. Of course. Somebody happens to record it. Especially because, you know, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use that as my answer, which is when you tell your truth, it's, it's not scary to talk yeah. to one, yeah. it's not scary to talk to yeah. 50,000. You ask me right now to read your email, right now. Yeah. If you gave me a long email and said read it, yeah. I'd be scared shitless. You know why? I'm bad at reading. Yeah. I don't like reading. Yeah. It's not what comes natural to me. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's like like I cri- I can go speak in front of this whole city, this whole thing. Eight, give me eighty million people. I'm ready. Give me the mic. I'm going. I'm ready right now. You ask me to read in front of this inner circle. I'm like, uh, you know, let's go. Well, let's go get a drink, guys. Like, like, like no, nah, that's stupid. Let's do business. Like, like, it's unbelievable. So, to Brian, Brian, or Byron, Byron, just go speak your truth. The biggest mistake people make. And your by accent, similar to me, I was a businessman just going to a conference, I don't know, like, you know, the number one reason people fail is because they have to think. Yeah, yeah. And when you think, yeah. because you don't know, because you're trying to fake it, you know, you know what's easy for us, and yours is more extreme than mine, but I have my version of it? When you're not at any plateau, yeah. when you've been there, like nothing's super scary. I'm what, what, you're gonna laugh at me? Right. Like when, when like kids made me drink pee because I couldn't speak English? Right. Like, like things aren't scary. What is somebody gonna do to you? Like, like, well, like serious, when you're man. eating yeah. shit out of the yeah. fucking corner? Yeah. Like yeah. what's, yeah. who's gonna do what? Yeah. Somebody's gonna laugh at you at a conference? Right. They, they didn't like the way you curse? Right. Like, I mean, that's the silly, yeah. like, so I think, I think the biggest thing is to talk your truth, Byron. Don't, don't try to act bigger than you are. Everybody does that. Yeah. Oh, now that I'm a big stage, let me make pretend or embellish that I built, sold a lot of apartments, yeah. or, or, or you know, people embellish yeah. or fake it, and then you're, and then you're scared. You're scared somebody's gonna call you out on it. You're scared somebody's gonna come. You know what I'm pissed about? I had, I had Tyler right now. I'm getting my report card right now sent to me. Wow. My report cards from high school because somebody in the comment section of Facebook said, "Gary, you weren't that bad of a student from high school." Only because I think they liked me and they didn't want to believe I was such a bad right, student. Right, right, right. I'm like, "Oh, you think so? Yeah, Let me go right. get it." You know, like so. I just think it's truths. Yeah. That's it. and I and I would say to him as well. You know, give them something, man. Like too many people spend so much time talking about their accomplishments and what they've done. Give them something. Give them a tool or two that they can literally take. I'm talking about as soon as like don't don't I listen to some of these guys, no disrespect, but it takes about 18 messages before you actually say something to me. Right? So I'm saying do me a favor, just give them one or two things that as soon as the conference is over, they can literally take with them and actually use. I'm super mad you said that yeah. because you're more right than what I was saying. It's more important than your truth, even though this doesn't sound like it. I believe that 90% of talks in public today yeah. are press releases yeah. for that person yeah. and they're doing propaganda for themselves yeah. and then they Absolutely, just leave. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I'm trying to guilt yeah. motherfuckers to yeah. loving me. Yeah. That I gave them so much yeah. that they're like, damn. Yeah. Like, that, I, I, like, honestly, you know what I like about Kendrick Lamar? What do you like about Kendrick Lamar? I like, I like, oh, we got a nice little cadence going here. Uh, I like that when, I feel like, I feel like if I was good enough to be a rapper, I would have the same mi- mindset. What I think he does, and I don't know if this has been talked about, again, I don't read anything, so I don't even know if this is out there. I assume it is, because it's so obvious. He goes and goes on other people's albums, and he's trying to steal those fans. Like when I listen to how he does it, I'm like, I get that. I literally, Eric, I swear to God, I go to every conference, and I'm trying to make anybody that came there for somebody else question that yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah. I want them to be like, no, damn, no, no. I came here. Because they're laughing. Explain that though. Explain, okay. Like, explain. I go to every yeah. conference yeah. and I go, look, this is a conference, there's this fancy person, there's Warren yeah. Buffett, there's Tony Robbins, yeah. there's Eric Thomas. Absolutely. I'm sure they, a lot of people can, yeah. I'm not the only person, yeah. but I'm gonna go on stage yeah. and I'm gonna make every single person leave saying, yeah. I don't like Warren Buffett anymore. Yeah. I like Gary Vee. Yeah. Like I'm trying to go, and by the way, yeah. that's not by having bravado, yeah. that's Aaron not is. having, that's not yeah. cursing, yeah. that's I'm gonna provide so much yeah. stream yeah. of value, yeah. so hard, yeah. so long, yeah. that they're gonna be tired when I'm done. Yeah. Bring yeah. value. And, and, and that's why you know who Gary Vee is. Like for real, and, and you guys gotta hear that. Because a lot of you that I study, who study in Gary Vee, this is why I laugh, laugh Gary. There are people who look up to you who don't do what you do. You mean everybody? You mean everybody? They're like, do you know how many people tweet hustle and work six hours a day? 
Like, I, I no, know. I'm serious. I know. I'm serious. Somebody I I'm very close to today asked me about my schedule, and I told them the schedule, and then they asked me, well, why are you up so early? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's move to the next question before I get angry. Uh, I get you. I get you. I By the way, real quick, I got angry. If you ever say to somebody else, why are you up so early, that is the quickest tell to you are not a winning player. If that has ever crossed your mind, you've lost. Go ahead. IKE asks, as a rapper, what are the best marketing tips to implement? Should I treat music like an entrepreneur would his product? I would just say exactly what you know Gary said before. Just add value. You know, um, think about a specific group of people because you can't reach everybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being real. I don't care how good you are at what you do. You pick your poison. You pick a group, and you just pour into that group so that every time they listen to you, like Gary said, like I'm not a be. I'm gonna just be honest. Like I don't. I'm like Gary. I don't listen to anything. I don't read anything. But I got hooked on this Beyonce song. I, I was here. <laughs> And I, I've been listening to that song this morning. I was listening to it. It's like I can't put it down. And it's not because it's Beyonce. Like, no disrespect, but it's not because of what you think. But when I hear the song, I hear I was here. So I'm waking up this morning like, hey, when you hit the Gary B show, you got to be present. Like, not just there. You got to be present because you may only get to do this one more time. So I'm listening to her song, and I felt like she wrote it for E.T. So if you're going to write We should it, find out. We should activate everybody. <laughs> Let's find out if B wrote it for you. <laughs> you think she did? I, I believe she wrote it. <laughs> I really did. Listen, I think, I, think, I think way too many people, I'll give you my advice. I think you need to make pretend, uh, not make pretend, let me rephrase, you haven't made it. I don't think this was J. Cole asking the question, right? So you haven't made it, so stop being fancy. I am stunned by the fanciness in the market of speakers, authors, entrepreneurs, athletes, and definitely rappers, because I got a ton of them. You're trying to be big time. You think acting like it is that. You know how you, be, you, have, you promote music? Make one person every day like your music. You know how you do that? By liking them first. By, by literally going to Twitter. I'll give you something real tangible. Twitter.com. Somebody loves this. I love it. Twitter.com slash search. Twitter.com slash search. Go search people. You've got your opinion of who you are as a rapper. Yep. Go search people talking about you know, future. Yep. You think that's your style. Yep. Jump in and say, yeah, I like that track too. Yes, I love that hook. When ET tweets that Beyonce spoke to me, jump in and be like, yeah, that part. Like, Become part of the community. Everybody wants everybody to love them. Love the community first, yep. then they'll love you back. Yep. Guilt them into loving you. Yep. Oh, that's so... Ah, ah, look guys, that first video, for real, I have, you'll be shocked at the, the millions of people, that one video has 38 million views, and you'll be shocked that I did not do that on purpose, you'll be shocked that I just, what, what Gary Vee just said, I pour into that community for about 18 years, and then boom, all of a sudden one day, that seed blossom into a tree. Doing, like 18 years. Doing the right thing is always the right years. Years. So, I so I'm also saying to whoever you are, don't, 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 don't do what Gary is saying and think that six months you're gonna see the results. Mm -hmm. Or a year, just because he told you that and you did what he told you to do, that six months later, well I know. How do you, how do you think about patience? I mean, it's life, it's, it's everything. It's, I'm a big, big, big pusher of patience. Yeah, I'm just saying, because you don't know the result. You can only work the process. You don't, you don't know when the pride is coming. Do you know so, what I'm most fascinated about? Everybody there right now, how many people gave up yeah, a month before yeah, it was gonna yeah, happen? Yeah. Like, Weeks. like, I'm worried that the, what happens when you die and you like go talk to God, God's like, yo, listen, I gotta show you something. You gave up on March 19th, yeah. 1994, wow. it was gonna happen on wow. April 7th, 1994, and you're like, what? Like, I'm fascinated by lack of patience. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Jacob Brown asks, as a PhD, what percentage would you contribute of where you are today to your degree? Absolutely zero. Zero. I didn't get the PhD for success. I got the PhD for the patience. I got the PhD for the process. When did you get your PhD? Uh, last year, May. Did you think you, like, be, you know what? This is a real good opportunity. On a real serious kick, I think what makes this show good is I'm super not scared. Talk, talk me through the PhD. Did you feel that that was a smart strategic thing to create a little more air cover so that you had more room to do your thing? So, so for, for me, real, for real. No, no, no. For me, Gary, 
that I was trying to, and when, when I first walked in, you, you talked about business. Yep. Right? And I told you I build people. Yes. But building people doesn't always pay well. I understand. Right? So I had I had to, to, to put myself in a different market. Um, I understand. Than where I originally wanted to yeah. be when I started, right? Yeah. But what happens when you're from Detroit, like I am, the, one of the most segregated cities in the United States of America, I did not have the code, the language, or the rules to get in the game that I wanted to play in. That's right. So for me, Michigan State gave me that opportunity yes. to go to class and hear that language, to get in an environment for six years and be a part of the rules. So you can't play the game if you don't know the game. So the, so the degree to me was about, it doesn't make Detroit bad. It doesn't make my community bad. But there's some things I need to operate on this level. It's interesting that you even w- went there. It's so, that's so, I'm so fascinated that you said that. I'm fascinated that in your mind it processed that this thing could be a counter move to making that Absolutely. thing look bad. It's an actually massive insight that people grossly underestimate. It's a thing that I grew up with in a different way. You know, I came to this country because Jews were persecuted in the Soviet Union. Like my parents and grandparents grew up in an environment where they were blamed for the world war. My grandparents, my, both my grandfathers went to jail for being Jewish. And I think that people don't understand that being a minority somewhere, Absolutely. Jewish in Europe, yeah. African American yeah. in America, yeah. there's a psyche that people understand which is, you hear, you hear us white guys here, here selling out, yeah. you, know, you, know, you know, Uncle Tom getting away from you. It's so much deeper oh, so than you think. So and, and let me tell you where I'm going with it. I'm actually going a very left turn on this. Most of you are so molded by your parents, you can't even wrap your head around it. And there are certain things your parents put in you that you are scared to break against because you don't want to let them down even though you might hate your parent or what have you. It's unbelievable to me that you went there, that the success of PhD had to be hedged in your mind, through your words, that that's not bad on Detroit. Uh -uh. That to me is such an insight that we need to have a conversation in general Absolutely. about people understanding that having something good happen doesn't trigger a negative event somewhere Absolutely. else and that is something we're all dealing yeah. with in yeah. our own versions. Yeah. And, and so for me it was like, E, if you can't, there's certain arenas you can't operate on if you don't know it. Like you, got, like you can't play football if you don't, like here, here's the thing I hate. I, I, okay, so what I do for a living, I hate Gary that a guy thinks he's gonna do what I've done for 20 something years. He's gonna watch my videos, he's just gonna do it for five months, five years, and boom, he's the next ET. Wait a minute, ET, just cause, you mean you can't register seven figure mastermind Instagram account and become that? Yeah. I, I mean, it's real. So I'm saying to anybody the realist. Here, I, I realize that, ET, you have what you think is success, but you get that PhD, you're gonna understand. Like it's like another language, Gary. It's like another language, like another world. You like being a student? I love. I love it. That you know that's not like, reading. No, but I, I love being a student. Yeah, it was interesting. I, I, don't, I, just, <laughs> I don't like the reading. Like, I think we're yeah. Ourselves. yeah, yeah, no. yeah. No, it's interesting. It's interesting. Huh? I like that. Okay. What What was the question? Yeah, I'm sorry. As a PhD, what percentage? Got it. Oh, okay, zero. Zero. Okay, good. Zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What up, what up, what up, it's your boy Zane coming from Sydney, Australia and welcome to the show ET. I believe this is a huge issue for a lot of people in life and my question is where does motivation stop and execution begin? I want to take this opportunity to thank you both for being huge influences in my life and I can proudly say that I wouldn't be the man I am today if it wasn't for you two. That's very nice. Z squared, I will tell you that (laughs) The amount of people that come in and write notes all day, little notebooks of motivation, spend ungodly amounts of hours. The amount of hours that we've spent watching each other's stuff, I don't want to speak for you, my gut is zero. Zero full hours. He said that. He said it. You know, like, it's just like, like, I don't know, I don't know, but here's what I can tell you. Some people need to be motivated. For me, I didn't. I got a chip on my shoulder and that thing will drive me into the dam in the ground. I'm so motivated, it's coming out of my face, right? Like, so I don't need that. So I can't speak for everybody. Everybody's got different versions. But here's what I can tell you. There's a sign in here that is driving everybody crazy. It's been brought up like four times in the last week. It says, ideas are shit. 
This is, hangs in our office and it's driving people crazy. And the reason I don't finish my statement in that sign is I want people to think. Because the sign actually reads, if it was in its full entirety, ideas are shit until you execute them. Where does motivation stop and start? Everybody's got a different answer, but here's what I can tell you. It's really easy to be motivated. Either you've got it or you can watch it. It's really hard to execute. It is the variable that separates people. People are always gonna tell me, every day, every day I roll up on people, they're like, yo, I'm gonna buy the Seahawks and you're gonna buy the Jets. And I'm like, great, can't wait to see you. People are always telling me that they're gonna do this and that and this and that. And you know what I do? I don't know if you do this. I ask lots of them to email me in 60 days, in 90 days, in a year. And you know how many do? Goose egg. People talk shit. And I don't know where it stops or starts, but I know that most of you, 99% of you, aren't gonna do anything about it, and that sucks. No, I, I, I'm with Gary, inhale, exhale. It's like asking me which, which one is which. I don't know which one is which. You inhale, you exhale. I don't know which one is first, which one is second. But if you're not executing, you're not motivational. Like, I don't know what that other stuff is you're doing. But real motivation, I don't know which one comes first, but it, it makes you do something. Like, if you're not doing anything, you're not really motivated. Do you think it's a little bit Star Wars-like? I just went somewhere weird. I'm sitting here, I'm like, you know, the truth is, don't you think, don't you think motivation comes a little bit from a little bit of darkness? Like, like, like this, is, this is my point. You know, this is fun to do this in this room, and I've been talking to, a lot, I was talking to a bunch of female entrepreneurs yeah. the other day, and some leaders in my company. There's a lot of mixed genders in here. I actually, I, you know, and again, I'm so scared to go here because I, I, I understand where I'm going, I don't know, I think having, being a minority, being an underdog is an advantage. I can't not believe that. I, like, I genuinely believe, I'm making this for my son. Xander, I think you're soft. I think you're watching this right now, six years from now. I think you're gonna text me in a few minutes and be like, yo, I'm gonna kill you, which I hope, because I hope you have that in you. But the truth is, I just believe that it's, that Andy's in a disadvantage. I just genuinely believe that. I, believe so. I just, I don't know how else to say it. Now, that's me, st- by the way, that's me stereotyping. If Andy's lucky to be motivated, something bad happened. He, he had a, 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 oh, I don't know his dynamic with his brother, but like, I think being a younger brother is a great one, right? Like, a, give me, show me a kid who walks in here and says, I'm like, what's your story? Well, I grew up super rich and white and it's awesome. I'm like, keep going. They're like, well, my older brother was a star football player and I wasn't. I'm like, okay, now, like I started, right? I'm like, show me something. I think, I think motiva- I think a lot of you are not motivated because you're lucky. And what I mean by that is you're lucky in different ways. You haven't dealt with the adversity that much. Uh, and, and by the way, it, it's not a black, white thing, girl, boy thing. Absolutely. It's, you, 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 you just had great parents, you had a good upbringing. Like life just didn't give you that much adversity and so, I don't know, you, like I want to slice throats. Like, like, I don't know, like my stuff is super evil. Like I'm being really honest with you guys today. I go to the conference, everybody's in the green room, friends, friends, I'm like, I'm gonna slice your throat. Like you're gonna go up there and people are gonna clap. I'm gonna go up there and people are gonna hate you after. They're gonna be like, why did I even clap for the guy before me? That, like that's what's going through my mind. It's just not a nice thing. No quite. Look, I, Do you know why people hate that when I have guests on? It just happened right now. I it, I interrupt. Oh, you're supposed to, Gary. I can't you help it. Up. Yeah, yeah, you're ready to go. I was just gonna say though, for me, <laughs> everybody's like, man, wait, your son, you're so engaged with your daughter. It's because my father wasn't there. I'm not a good father. I just didn't have my father. So every day I wake up, that drives me. I'm not gonna be him. Every time I get on the mic, it's like my people didn't take it. All of us talk. Nobody took it back. So I'm taking it back. So I'm, I'm with you. It's the dark side. It's the I didn't have, I ate out of the trash can. I told the kids yesterday with the NBA, I said, look, everybody can get, but can you keep? So for me, I say, I'm not into money. I just don't want to go back to being homeless. I don't want to eat out of trash cans again. I don't want to sleep in a bad building. So, so it's the darkness in me that gets me up and drives me. I genuinely believe the worst thing in life is to be somewhere, grow, yeah. and then go backwards. Go back. Now, go I'm back. weird yeah. because I'm also weirdly romantic to it. <laughs> like that Rocky where he loses everything and he's mm-hmm. back, mm-hmm. there's a part of me that's always like, ooh, if I lose everything, yeah. but then I'll rise back yeah. and, and then I'll realize who my real friends were. Yeah. Andy will not want to be my friend anymore. Good, uh, when I rise back up, I'll be like, fuck yeah, you. Andy like, you know, like, Andy I know. I, you. you think so? I think so. All right, <laughs> let's go to the next one. Andy, you owe me. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Perez asks, in route to self-awareness, do you believe we find ourselves or create ourselves? Mm. Well, that's a deep question. Mm. How self-aware do you think you are, if I asked you that? Very. Me too. Very. 
Who do, think, who, do think, who do you think is more self-aware, me or you? Me. You know what I feel. You know, you know what I feel. I think you think it's you. Of course. I feel like, I genuinely think I'm the most self-aware person on earth. Right, right, I don't know, Gary. I'm waking up but do you f- do you, in the morning. Do you feel? Just constantly I'm texting you at 2.53 tomorrow morning. Oh, <laughs> and I haven't even gotten to sleep yet. So. Well, I, I, I did go to sleep. <laughs> so, what, that's a really nice question. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, no, no, I, I believe, I believe that you know, in our book, uh, we just came out with Average Skill, Phenomenal Will. Is that your first book? Third book. How, how, how are you in book world? You good at it? Yeah, we, yeah we're good at it. We're very good. Very good at it. Well, how it's good? Underground. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, what do you mean underground? There's like it's a little garage. Garage. <laughs> Real, self-published from the garage. Like what, like like open up the trunk and selling it from the back? Absolutely. Love it. They're gonna lie. Yeah, I know, I know, I'm kidding. Yeah, so, so no, no, but our first. Have you ever considered book. going main publishing? We have, and yeah, I, like, we didn't like the numbers. Yeah. I'll be honest, when we started out, we had such a big following that one of the supporters, like off the bat, like right. we'll buy it as soon as it comes out at twenty five ninety nine. Yeah. That you know we went talking. You're like, why go share with like, other people? Why go share. Yeah, right. They were like, okay, four dollars a book. We were like, yeah, no, we're good. We're going to keep it. Yeah, over here. totally understand. Yeah. So, so for us in our third book, average skill, phenomenal will, underdog, we believe that you don't have to have a phenomenal skill, but if you have a phenomenal will. You're not going to quit. You're not going to stop. You'll be successful. The very first chapter, this is why I think I'm mm-hmm. more serious about it. The very first chapter is self-awareness. Very first chapter. Really? Because yeah. you know what's funny about my book? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Talk yeah. about who's more serious? Yeah. Yeah. I put self-awareness in my oh, motherfucking oh, no. title. Oh, 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 oh. I put in my title. Oh, 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 oh. You got oh, chapters. Oh, I got titles. You got chapters. I got titles. You got it on the cover. You know, I think that's a really interesting question. I think that's one that we'll never really fully figure out. I'm always wondering, was this my destiny or did I mentally create it? I think it's a very fine line. I definitely think there's elements of both. And I'm a big believer in momentum. I'm sure as you started feeling it, and it, you know, momentum is real. I, you know what, I do think a lot of things, like I think about sports, and you see that athlete who matured a little bit late, right, and had a big second year, and then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, like, you know what's funny, I started a sports agency called Vayner Sports. Wow. We just started, we're recruiting kids. Okay. And I'm talking to these kids, I'm like, when did you think that you could be a pro, right? They're like juniors right now, seniors about to come out. And a lot of them are like, after this one game my sophomore year. Wow. Like, like multiple wow. people said it. After one game. Or after one big game, right? Or when my homie went to the league and I was dogging him in practice, I'm like, wait a minute, Jerome's going to the league? Right. Like, you know, like, yeah. like, it, like yeah, it's I'm super, dog. No, yeah, and so, and then, but what's interesting, what I'm trying to make the connection is, when they said that, when they made the decision that they could go into the league, everything changed. Yeah, yeah. They worked out more, yeah, yeah. they played better, yeah. they ate better, yeah. they went down to one girlfriend instead of seven. Yeah. My one man, I was like, I was dying when he said that. You know, but it's funny, it was the mental decision that created their actions. I got my health together two years ago. It was a mental game, then I got there, now I'm there. It's very mental. I don't think we talk about the brain enough in our society and I think that's gonna be a big subject that we'll discover. I think people look back at some of the things we talk about and others a hundred years from now and be like, wow, they were early on to understanding how much the brain could do versus all the other intangibles. Absolutely. All right, ET, you get to ask the question of the day. Any question you want. Who do I ask? The Vayner Nation and all your fans. You get to ask questions and in the YouTube comments and Facebook comments, people will answer it. What's the one, you know, you're gonna get a thousand answers. You've got a good sense of where our crossovers are. What question do you want to ask? I can ask you anything. Not me, them. Oh shoot, I want to ask Gary. You can go ahead, ask me and then, and then think oh, about, you go ahead. You guys answer my question as well, go ahead. So, so the one crossover. Yeah. Like, you know, like when you look at basketball, yeah. you got a guy that's just dribbling, dribbling, yep. dribbling, and then one day, he crosses over yeah. and saying he feels like this is my yes. this is my what was your crossover for you what was that one like you knew my first baseball card show mm-hmm. I can't, I'm so glad you asked this this is not something we've ever really expanded on I've maybe told it once I'm curious if you guys even know it my first baseball card show was in 8th grade and the Phillipsburg Mall had a baseball card show and I'm like we're going to do it I'm going to do my base I'm going to do my baseball card show and I went on Friday after school it was a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday show, but I was still in school, so I couldn't do the Friday, but I wanted to get a table for Saturday and Sunday, and I go Friday to the promoter, and this big, fat guy comes out. Like, 400-pound guy, right? Looked like, like, Avalanche from WWF, like, big guy, like, you know, tugboat. Like, big guy, 
And I, he, I go, are you the promoter? He goes, yeah. I go, can me and my friends get a table for the show? He goes, the show started. I'm like, no, no, for Saturday and Sunday. You know, it's like real combative. I'm like, oh, look. I'm like four foot seven, like 84 pounds, you know, and, and, and I'm like, no, no, we want a table. And on the drive there, this is the punchline. On the drive there, we made a pact, like all hands in. If it's $100 or less, we'll do it. And if it's more, we're not doing it. Super packed, Blood Brothers, like, this is what we're gonna do. We get there, this man goes, sure, it's $300. Mm-hmm. And then before he said dollars, I said, we'll take it. So we shake hands, we walk out of the mall, and they're just looking at me like, and I was like, I was like, it, $300 was like, you know, like, I was like, I, we got, I'm like, we'll do it. I was nervous, this and that. First, we get in Saturday morning, 7 a.m., donuts, the mall's not open yet, we're setting up, we're excited, I'm like, I'm like on a fault. I can speak in front of eight million people, I'm not gonna feel that energy like I felt there was my first, you know? And I walked that whole mall, I walked it, I looked at everybody's tables, I memorized, memorized everybody's prices on every card, I came back to my table and I lowered every one of my prices a dollar cheaper than the lowest price across the whole show on every single card and then I hustled and by, Midday, by like 12, 1 o'clock, we were there for four hours, the mall was open, we'd already made all our money back and more. The night before, my dad, who never talked to me ever, he just worked, I just, me and my dad had no relationship. My dad came up to me, he, my, I told my mom I was nervous and like, holy shit, my dad came up to me, and I love my pops for this, he just said, it's gonna be a great learning experience. I didn't understand. I was like, what does it mean, this is stupid, you know. Anyway, <laughs> that was it. That night I went to sleep, and I was in eighth grade, and I'd already been punting school since fourth or fifth grade, but that night I went to sleep and I said, I'm gonna be great. That was it. And I've never wavered since. So that's me. What's your story? What's your crossover moment? You keep asking questions, we'll keep answering them. <laughs>